Welcome back to day two of the Inventor IO 30 Days Lost in Space sci fi adventure. So, yesterday we set up the hero board, we wrote some code, we tested out that code, and we changed out our backdrop for something a little more contrasty. The board is still running the last operation that was uploaded to it, which is the internal LED turning on for three seconds, turning off for five seconds, which was the last code that was compiled and uploaded to the board. So now I'm going to get into day two of the 30 days lost in space, and we're going to kind of build on what we have here the second day's lesson is going to be utilizing the breadboard. It's going to be utilizing an LED and a resistor, which is kind of the second proverbial hello world when it comes to these Arduino type kits. So I'm going to watch the lesson. I'm going to wire up the board and then I will uh, reconvene and we'll be on the computer and I'll show you how the code goes and then I'll show you the board with the circuitry set up. Okay so I've watched the video and basically all they're having you do in day two is wire an external LED to the breadboard. And the way that the breadboard is set up like they mentioned in the video, the Looking at it in, in this perspective, the leftmost rails and the rightmost rails are connected vertically. One of them being a positive and one of them being a negative. On my board, the left side of the leftmost rail is negative and then the right side is positive. And then on the opposite side, the left side of the rightmost rail is negative and the right side is positive. So it's the same on both, it's just you can kinda get thrown off because you may think that it's mirror image, like one is positive, negative, and then negative, positive, but it's actually negative, positive, negative, positive. And really it doesn't matter which one you put in there, you can you can uh, really screw up somebody's day and put the positive in the negative and the negative in the positive and it's not going to short the rail out or anything like that. But the inner sections here, these rails run horizontally and they're separate from one another. So if we're looking at this guy here, pin number 30, pin number 30 will run across to here, but then it stops and then you would need a jumper to jump from here to here to include the rest of these 30 pins over here. So what they're doing in this case is they're linking a ground wire to one of the pin locations. They're linking pin number 12 on the hero board to this location here. And then from there, this is carrying positive voltage all the way across this section here. They're jumping between here and here with the resistor, which will then cut the voltage value going up to this LED. And this LED is shaped in this way to help differentiate between the positive side and the negative side. And you can't wire them backwards. LEDs only work in one direction. So if you wire it backwards, the LED will not work. So they have, in this case, it looks like pin 15, positive going here, jumping across with the resistor to cut the, or cut the voltage flowing through, up into here, light up, out, and then back to ground. The code that they want you to write is pretty simplistic. It just assigns an integer value to a variable called light. 
and they're assigning that to pin number 12 on the board, which is pin number 12 here, which is supplying the five volt voltage to the breadboard. And then inside of the void setup, they have pin mode, then they assign the variable of light, which is pin number 12 to an output because the Arduino architecture allows you to define whether a pin is an input or an output. Some of them will also generate pulse width modulated signals. Um, underneath that they have digital write and then light which is just the variable up here which is again tagging to pin number 12 and they're setting that to high which sends the voltage through the output to the positive side the resistor cuts the voltage going into the LED and the LED turns on so what I did in my code I got a little fancy schmancy I'm using pin socket number 11 instead of 12 I set my pin mode or I set my integer value variable to red LED I told it that it's 11 my pin mode I told it to set red LED which is 11 to an output I then got fancy and I set the pin mode to the built-in LED as an output as well and then in the loop I have the lights going back and forth between one another the internal or the built-in LED turns off when the external LED turns on it stops for a half a second or it stays that way for half a second and then it reverses so they so the breadboard LED goes off and the internal LED goes on but we can do this in a couple of different ways I can have it so that the built-in LED is not part of the code I can re-upload that which will just make the external LED blink and then up in my setup because I want to because I have a, a static area here where I can assign things to occur as a one-shot deal I can paste that digital write built-in LED set that to high and then when I upload this code it turns on the internal LED leaves it on for now and for now until forever and then it blinks the external LED and I could do the opposite just by changing this variable name here to red LED and then down here we'll say LED underscore capital LED underscore built in here and here so now in this situation the external LED goes on the internal LED will continue to flash so I'll upload that and when you upload it compiles before it sends it and it'll let you know if there's any issues and I'm looking at it right now I've got the LED on the board blinking and I've got the external LED on the breadboard not blinking so let's go back to the overhead view and I'll show you guys what I've got okay so we're back and we could see that in this overhead view I have this red lead coming out of pin socket number 11 going to in my case pin 16 on the breadboard from there it attaches to a resistor in this horizontal rail here which jumps the signal over to this side of the board puts the positive voltage into the LED 
which then transfers the negative side to pin number 15 which attaches to the short rail with this black wire going to the ground pin. And the last program that I ran was what I just explained. The internal LED is blinking, the external LED is turned on. If I want to change that a little bit, I can have it to where the internal LED stays on for two seconds, goes off for a half second, and then just loops that over and over. So I just change the delay value in my program, it stays on for two seconds, goes off for a half second, back on for two seconds. If I wanted to rerun the code that I had before with the LEDs alternating back and forth between each other, I'm just going to undo the changes that I made to the code, re-upload, and now we can see that they're alternating back and forth. So this is just a basic exercise in using output pins on an external breadboard and connecting these two sections to one another. If I wanted to, I could use these common rails here and here. That's a, it's a nice little practice, nice little exercise. And what you can do is you can use multiple outputs here. And again, use a common rail to have at least a ground, then you would have a ground point. You have your outputs going to individual pins in this section here, and then you could tie your you could tie your grounds over to here, and it would save you. Wouldn't really save you on jumpers, that's for sure. But the one thing that it would do is it would eliminate it would eliminate you running out of ground points because there's not a lot of ground points on many circuit boards that you're going to be using either in this in these examples or in the field. So if we were wiring up for example, again because this uh there's a lot of Linux CNC content on this channel, but if we're wiring up a Mesa 7i76e, we've got a ton of inputs and outputs, but the inputs are syncing, the outputs are sourcing which means that the inputs take in ground and the outputs put out 24 volt. But there's not a lot of return points for either of those. There's not a lot of 24 volt going out to a button that would tie into an input. And there's not a lot of ground points for the outputs to link to. So in that case, you would use a terminal block, and the terminal blocks would distribute 24 volt, in my case, on my Linux CNC board, and they would distribute ground. So that's what this breadboard is kind of doing here and here. It's using these as common source terminal blocks. That way you have that many 5 volt points and return points for your common or your ground. So that's going to conclude this video. This was a pretty quick exercise. I'm going to do, just like they say, one per day. I'm not going to inundate myself by doing all the lessons at once. So uh, we're going to end it off here, and tomorrow's another day. We will see you then.